Hey everybody, welcome back to the 100 days of 2026 NEC code changes. We're almost halfway there. Man, I hope you've uh, stuck it out so far. So much to talk about. We're in Article 314 now, which is mainly, you know, outlet and device boxes, pole boxes, things like that. And Section 314.22 talks about surface extensions. And I remember when I first started really, really nerding out to become a code nerd, right? That was about 2001 is when I really took my journey to to really try and learn the code as, as absolute best as I could. And I remember reading 314.22 a million times and just being completely perplexed, uh, not understanding exactly what this rule was, was applying to. What is a surface extension? That's what this rule talks about. So we're going to find out. And I think they made a really nice clarification here. Now, truth be told, I think the words, uh, the, the rule is the same with or without the rules that we added here in the 2026, right? But uh, it will reduce conflict and arguments in the field, and that's always worth doing, right? So let's take a look at what we did here, Article 314, outlet device, pole and junction boxes, conduit bodies, fittings, and handhold enclosures. All right, 314.22, surface extensions. The use of multiple extension rings is now specifically allowed. Okay, surface extensions must be made from one or more extension rings mounted to the box. Okay, that right there is a surface extension, right? So what we have here is a garage door opener receptacle in a dwelling unit and the person wanted to add a receptacle somewhere else in their garage, but of course it was all drywalled, so they added a surface extension, right? They took off the faceplate, added an extension ring, which is exactly what this guy here is. So they added the extension ring and then came off and did a surface extension, right? Which is that guy right there. So surface extensions must be made from one or more extension rings mounted to the box. It says one or more. So how many extension rings can you have? The answer is yes, that's how many. You can have as many as you want, right? You can have as many extension rings as you want. That has always been the case. The code has never said that. Um, more importantly, the code never said you can't, right? And the code doesn't say you can't, then by default, you usually can. Uh, but where would you find this information if it's not indicated in the code? Uh, the answer is you could go to UL Product IQ. Sometimes that will help you because sometimes in the listing, it will actually say one or more extensions can be used. And that's exactly what it said um, in uh, Product uh, Guide Card QCIT, uh, Quincy, or what is that? Quebec, Charlie, India, Tango. So if you go to UL Product IQ, search for uh, QCIT, that's metal outlet boxes, it says one or more extensions can be used. This has always been the case, but you have some people saying that this is a violation. No, it's not. There is one thing that you gotta be very careful about here that's a probable violation, and that is how long are these wires, right? <laughs> We all know you need six inches of free conductor length coming out of the box, right? That's uh, 300.15 in the 2026. But you also need at least three inches going past the front of the box if any dimension of the box is eight inches or less. So this is a four inch by four inch box, which means these wires way up here, they better be long enough to go all the way down and stick out three inches. As long as they are, this is golden. There's an exception that says, well, a surface extension doesn't have to come from, ex from an extension ring. It can actually come from a box cover, and that's what this is, right? This is a surface extension from the cover of a box, but the cover must be unlikely to fall off. The wiring method needs to be flexible, and it needs to be long enough to allow removal of the cover and a wire type equipment grounding conductor needs to be in that raceway. So even if I meet the criteria in 250.118 to use this uh, liquid tight as the equipment ground, I have to have one in here because this is a surface extension from the front of a box. What else? Have to have enough flexibility that I can actually take the box cover off it needs to not just fall off, right? And sometimes that'll happen with a four inch by four inch box where you, you know how on a four by four blank, you've got kind of the little hook things that grab onto the 832s. Well, if you put that on backwards, 
eh, if it's a blank cover, probably not that big of a deal. But if you're coming off the front of that with some wiring, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna look at that and say, hey, you better have that thing right side up, otherwise it's likely to fall off and we could have some problems. So there you go. How many extension rings can you have on a box? That was the whole crux of this change. And as we all know, the answer is as many as you can fit in a wheelbarrow. Who cares, right? As long as you comply with the free conductor length rules in 300.15, you're good. All right. So there we go. Nice little clarification there. We're going to stick around in Article 314 for another video where we talk about box support in 314.23. I hope you'll join me. And I hope you'll be safe out there. See you guys.